It's the Nut Shack. I have been hearing that phrase on loop in my head for so long now. So very long. When did I make that top 10 worst cartoons of the 2000s list? Like a year ago? Anytime I try to sleep, it's the Nut Shack. Anytime that I try to eat, it's the Nut Shack. I turn on the radio, it's the Nut Shack. You know what that means, right? This show has officially become a meme. You hear that phrase so much, it gets to the point where you have to just say, STOP! Stop! Please! Just, just stop it! I did it already! I hit the body under the floorboards! Just fucking stop the nutjack! The theme song itself inspires so much horror, you'd think that it was produced by Stephen King or something. Holy fuck. You may have thought that The Nut Shack was like other bad things that become memes, like Arthur's Big Hit or the Zelda CDI games, and thought the show might have been cute and campy, but no! No! Trust me, you don't want to go there. I saw just one episode, and I knew that it was one of the worst cartoons of the worst decade in animation. And keep in mind, that was after watching this, and this, and this. But I was an idiot and thought that I should be fair. I've talked about this show before, and its theme song several times more. But to truly appreciate how AWFUL the Nut Shack is, you need to take an in-depth look. Just still frames and short clips don't really do this justice. For one, the theme song doesn't clue you into how bad the voice acting is. Yeah, here's one of the biggest problems with the show. I can't understand what anyone is saying. I don't know if it's their accents, most of which seem to be exaggerated. Right, this is the lottery. Okay, come Good on, luck, baby. Everybody. I mean, besides that, everyone sounds like they're mumbling their lines and slurring on top of that. It's like they saw one clip of Beavis and Butthead talking and they said, Yes! Let's do that for everybody all of the time. That won't get exhausting ever. And that's the default voice acting. Some characters sound worse than that. Phil, for instance, talks like he has a sinus infection. I don't know that woman, man. This bullet's going right in her anus. Jack says everything with a sarcastic inflection. Like everything he says is a question. You know, I'll talk to him. Don't worry, me, Dean. And these are the two main characters that we spend most of our time with. And as I said, some of the accents are exaggerated because stereotypes be funny, I guess. And then there's this thing. Feel on the balloon tip in the licky boom boom down. This is horror. And he has the worst voice acting for any character that I've ever heard in any medium. No exaggeration, I am not kidding. It sounds like a distorted washing machine full of broken glass while the radio gets dismantled piece by piece with a chainsaw. In a tornado. They tried to make him sound like... a robot, I guess? So there are all these filters that make his voice sound incomprehensible. <laughs> It's not like the animation is much better. In still frames, it doesn't look too bad, but everything moves so mechanically. It's like literally every single motion is done with nothing more than a tween. So many frames are obviously just flat out repeated to add time. And 
things are layered in such a disparaging way. That's not even counting the times where they flat out cheat. Notice how Phil's shirt is black, and they don't show the outlines for where his arms begin. So Phil's torso is pretty much the exact same shape in every single shot, because they didn't want to take more than the 5 minutes they had to spend on every single episode. And when it comes to the backgrounds, it looks like they just pasted in random assets from other shows. The layouts of the city, for instance, they look physically impossible for any sense of practicality, even in a cartoon. It's all just a mess. And that segues nicely into the worst aspect of the show. It's stories and it's writing. First, let's talk about structure. Now I'm gonna let you in on a well-guarded secret of writing. Not many people know this, but most stories have these things called beginnings, middles, and ends. The Not Shack doesn't really have those. Each episode is structured kind of like a dream. Have you ever smoked a cockroach, bro? <laughs> I swear I'm not developing secret powers and stuff, man. It doesn't really begin and it doesn't really end. Just a bunch of random nonsensical things happen in an incoherent manner. Oddly paced. And then it all ends when you wake up screaming in your bed. <laughs> Even if your story is a comedy, it still needs to have a definitive beginning and a definitive end. I can't believe I'm saying this because most people know this by the time they reach grade 2. And now we get to the content portion of the review. Yippee! I've been dreading this one for a long, long time. But we have to begin sometime. The episode starts with a wet dream, and it all goes downhill from there. <laughs> Phil gets woken up by an old woman shouting, I think. I get that they don't want to upset the neighbors of the back alley they recorded this in, but there are definitely ways to make people seem like they're shouting without actually, you know, shouting. You could start by raising the volume on the character you want to be shouting. Simple audacity can do that. Oh, good morning, Phil. You're up kind of early. Will you try to sleep with some lady yell in your ear? I don't know what he's saying. I'm not even gonna try to figure out what he's saying. I chose this episode specifically because he has little to no screen time and isn't important to the plot in any way whatsoever. So this old woman is selling blue to everyone, which is a real thing. It's a popular food in parts of Asia, and it's basically fertilized decade. I, um... I've never tried it before, so, uh, moving on. I-I-I uh, shouldn't comment too much, though, because I eat stuff like marshmallows, which is basically made of pig's feet. Phil leaves the room to basically attack the woman, and then the episode stops so her I can have a little dance high on pot. It's really awkward, and it's kind of obvious when they repeat the flames. You're gonna notice a lot of filler in this episode. There are about two minutes worth of actual episode going on. The old woman starts delivering eggs. Why do these terrible adult cartoons keep trying to make old people look as grotesque as possible? It doesn't really help for any effect that they're trying to go with. Anyway, she's got a bunch of duck eggs, and one of them has a glowing red hourglass for 
some reason. I'd say that I want an explanation for that, but the episode happily gave me an explanation for that, and then I regretted every decision that I've ever made in my entire life. Not much actually happens in this scene. Phil starts arguing and then everyone starts throwing duck eggs at him. I'm sure that there are jokes here, but they're so glued into the rest of the show that I can't really see them. Let me put it like this. If a character is wearing a funny costume or acting weird or talking oddly in, say, Ed, Ed and Eddie or The Loud House, you can clearly see that that's a joke. But here, everyone is already acting weird or grotesque or talking oddly, and you can't tell where the jokes are supposed to be because it's all even leveled. After a few more repeated cycles of animation, Jack buys the rest of the balloon eggs. With the money that the old woman got, she goes and buys a lottery ticket. Then we have a flashback where two ducks who are supposed to be Snoop Dogg and Tupac are flying over Hollywood. And you seriously still think I'm kidding about these things. It's weird. The worst episode of the worst cartoon of the 90s that I reviewed Mega Babies had a reference to Snoop Dogg. The episode of the worst cartoon of the 2000s that I reviewed had a cameo of Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was in Sanjay and Craig. A cartoon that I also reviewed from the 2010s. And I'm stalling because this episode is about to get 10 times worse. When your brain cells have suffered a little bit, <laughs> you gotta have moments like this. So Snoop Dogg and Tupac, who are ducks, decide that they want to start shitting on everyone. I think that this is supposed to give us some kind of backstory on how the glowing duck egg was made, but these two are male ducks and male ducks don't lay eggs. So the ducks shit on the fork of someone who I think is supposed to be Dr. Phil. It's just that simple. I think because the animation isn't good enough to convey the character, the voice acting doesn't even sound close to trying to imitate him, and they don't understand how celebrity satire works. Then they shit on Eminem because throwing random celebrities into your cartoon works, maybe, probably, on some other planet. And look at Kim Shady, she just got degraded by some bird shit. Yes, bird shit. She ate it with her lips beyond. The voice acting isn't even close. It's understandable that you can't get the real guy, considering that you didn't have the budget to pay for the television to watch this on before you sent it out. But, unless it's the joke that he sounds absolutely nothing like Eminem, you should try to get roughly in the ballpark of what the celebrity sounds like. Then they make a joke about Scientology and it. Fuck it, I'm moving on. After that, the flashback just ends. Okay, kids, are you ready to play a game? What did we learn in that flashback? A. How the duck egg was made. B. How the old woman got the egg. Or C. Absolutely fucking nothing in the scene was just a disgusting waste of time. If you guessed C, Congratulations, you just wasted a part of your life thinking about the net check. And I'm surprised you get a steaming pile of nothing with a complimentary bubbling sadness inside.
Seriously though, in a competent story, well in a competent story, absolutely nothing in this story would be here. But, here's how this is supposed to work. You have two flashbacks, like the episode does. One, we see the ducks lay the magic egg. And then in the next flashback, it gets in the old woman's possession. Because otherwise, assuming that someone can like any characters in the show, we comparatively don't care about the ducks. Characters we've never seen before. The show tries to make them random celebrities to make up for that, but it really doesn't fix the mess. So Jack and Phil make breakfast again for some reason. Okay, I actually do know the reason. It's so they can reuse animation with the bowl of eggs just photoshopped into the image. Now, this next scene is a cutaway gag. I say that because there really is no indication that it is a cutaway gag. She does that again, man. You'll see what's gonna happen. You'll see. saying this. I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but Family Guy does cutaway gags better. What happens in their cutaway gags is usually more bizarre than what's going on in the actual episode, or at the very least, it involves a different setting or characters so you can actually tell the two apart. The first time that I watched this, I thought that what happened next was just the next scene in the actual story. The show does this a lot, with random scenes that end up being dreams or imagined spots, and the plot moves around randomly because of it. Anyway, we spend about a minute with Phil on a rooftop pissing on everyone, including someone who starts to drink it. Because... you can't tell the difference between rainwater and piss. The, the joke doesn't even make sense in context. Piss usually isn't clear, it smells different, and it's warm as opposed to rain usually being cold. Now we have a character called Wayne. I don't know anything about him because I don't give a shit. He annoys for some more, which seems kinda redundant at this point. And then we learn that Phil and Jack are going to have a party tonight. Damn, I hate that guy. Why the hell did you invite him, Jack? He's a landlord, Phil. And he's real nice to me. He lets me keep all I can. He likes my cooking. And he's a white man. I don't get the joke. Is this supposed to be some kind of big social observation? It, it doesn't say anything about Phil. W whatever, J just hit me with what you got next. I'll, I'll take anything. Jack asks Phil to apologize to the old woman, saying that it's bad karma. Phil farts in his face. Apparently, he doesn't believe in karma. And then we get to... This scene. Oh, oh god. I, I forgot about this scene. 
chihuahua with a giant dick runs up to Jack and Phil. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> and it's just a succession of giant dick jokes. <laughs> Actually, not even. As we learned in the cavalcade of not comedy, just showing a dick is not a joke. It doesn't make anything funnier. It's stupid and lazy. This scene would be exactly the same if the dog's dick was invisible. It bites Phil, and it also has a red hourglass, and it runs off because karma, I guess. Duck karma. Two things. First thing, Simpsons did it. Second thing, does anyone else notice the background instrument here is like one instrument? And whoever is using it doesn't seem to know how to play it. Then Phil tries to hit on the woman. Sorry, pretty ass. Pick those up for me, sweetie. Okay, sure. And yes, all women in the show are drawn like that because the show is made by middle schoolers. I'm pretty sure that all the women in the show were voiced by the same person, too. Then the dog comes back and bites Jack in the ass. End of scene. Then we we'll return to the the ducks. Fuck the celebrities, can't fuck with us, duck! The sizzle, my dizzle. Oh shit, is that that motherfucker David Blaine? Damn it is! I used to like ducks now. Now I don't. Now ducks are the enemy, and they must be destroyed. The scene is the same thing as before. Ducks shitting on more celebrities. What more do you want me to say? Then they shit on a little kid, and the mother curses them, I think. You son of a duck man, you eggs be cursed forever, you Like, gypsy curse completely out of nowhere. And then this next scene must be seen. To be believed. Hey, yo, Snoop, we coming to get you, Duck Head Old Son! All three of them literally appeared in the hay with no animation whatsoever. They played a sound effect to mask the fact that they didn't animate the ducks falling into the hay. Who seriously thinks that this is okay? The most incompetent shows that I've ever tackled. 12 Ounce Mouse and Patty the Pelican. They at least knew to keep movements in their animation. Who signed off on this? Who approved this? Then one of the ducks lays an egg and the old woman picks it up. Even though this is clearly not her farm and apparently she's been stealing all of her eggs. And we're supposed to see her as the good person in all of this. According to the episode, this was absolutely vital information for the plot, and it explains absolutely everything. I mean, you could have just said that the old woman placed a gypsy curse on the egg. That's what most people do when they tell this kind of story. But no, you wanted to go the extra mile and load the episode with duck shit. But apparently all this means that that specific egg is cursed. Even though the old woman who originally had the egg was not cursed in any way whatsoever. Even though, 
as I said, she was stealing her products. Eventually we get to the party and then get, like, a really weird effect. Everything for the next few minutes is from Phil and Jack's perspective. I don't know why, it doesn't really add anything. For starters, you're only supposed to do this from one person's perspective for, I think, all obvious reasons. I honestly think they were just too lazy to animate Jack and Phil in these scenes. But that's just me. Literally nothing happens in this scene. We just get to see a random characters that don't have anything to do with the episode of the story. I think that it's trying to be funny, but once again, the humor is invisible. The scene just goes on and on, and I want to get off this ride, and I feel like I'm going to throw up, and I just want it to be over. We enter this party at the 15 minute mark. And because they realized the plot was way too short, we spend almost four full minutes with nothing happening. That's about 20% of the episode. Imagine if one in five pages in a book were blank. Imagine if one in five minutes in a movie was blank. In what other context is this acceptable? After all of the nothing, we cut to an old woman on the toilet. She's on the toilet because you know why she's on the toilet. Anyway, she wins the lottery. And then we cut back to Phil, who is off his rocker drunk and slurring his words only slightly more than usual. So he gets dared to eat the duck egg with the glowing red hourglass. He does, and then he thinks that he's turned into a duck. one of the hardest episodes that I've ever had to get through. Not just because of what was shown, like the disturbing content and the shit and stuff, but everything else about it. It has the toilet humor of most of the cartoons that I've watched, with the animation quality on the level pixel pinky. Mixed with the voice acting of Puppy in My Pocket and the story coherence of My Life Me. I mean, no exaggeration when I say nothing about the show works. Even shows that I gave the hell, like Mega Babies and Adult Party Cartoon and Mr. Pickles, they at least the skill and efforts to build the effect they wanted. That's why they're so gross, horrific, and disturbing respectively. This wants to be a character-driven show, but no one in it has any character. It wants to be a comedy, but no one knows how to write a joke that doesn't begin or end with shit. I don't even know what this show is trying to be. And I knew what Mr. Pickles or Mega Babies was trying to be. It's easily in the top 10 worst cartoons of all time. Probably the top 5 worst. It's not as bad as Mega Babies or Adult Party Cartoon, but I can honestly see this as a clean number 3. So please, I implore you. Can we just let the meme die and forget about this goddamn show? <laughs> Why you little 